Hello! So I was gonna make this all into one big video, but I decided to split it into two different ones just so, you know, you don't have to skip through certain parts to get to the part you want to see. We're gonna do two different topics, two different videos. Sounds good. Before I get started, um, if I start sounding really out of breath for no reason, it's because I am here. It's kind of hard to... See, there's a, there's a mountain right there. I am not home. Right now I'm in Colorado. These chairs are really uncomfortable. It is a completely different altitude than what I'm used to in Texas, so I get out of breath really easily. <gasps> so if I'm constantly taking big breaths, it is not because I'm out of shape. It is because I'm in Colorado and also kind of out of shape. Topic of this video, I am going to be talking today about how in, in like three or four days, Finding Dory is being released into the movies, which I am incredibly excited about because I've been waiting my whole childhood for this, so I am pumped. But one thing I was not around to witness when I was younger is how many people become interested in owning saltwater tanks after these movies are released. I work at a pet store now and my coworkers were telling me how during the first week of the release we're not allowed to sell dory fish because of how many people come in just wanting them because their daughter or son or whatever liked the way it looked in a movie. They were telling me how much of a problem they had with clownfish when Finding Nemo was released. So I just wanted to get a few facts straight with y'all about just how difficult owning a dory fish is so um i just wanted to get this you know out there so when finding dory releases and you or your daughter or your son or your granddaughter or i don't know how old you are if you're watching this video someone in your family or you yourself decides that you want a dory i'm gonna tell you why you don't want a dory so you don't murder dory Reason number one, you don't want a dory. I don't know how much you care about the ocean, but if you're interested in saltwater fish, I'm hoping you care just, just a little bit about the ocean. Um, dory, I don't know if y'all could hear that, but that was, that was my brother throwing a fit way inside over there and you could hear it out here. So imagine how loud it is in there. The fish dory is actually called a blue tang. Now, blue tangs cannot really be bred in captivity too well at this point. So when you buy a blue tang, if it does not strictly say aquacultured blue tang, you are buying a blue tang that has been caught from the ocean. Now, if you like the movie Finding Nemo and if you like the movie Finding Dory when you see it, they both have a lot about how catching fish in the ocean is a no-no. Why you don't want to own fish that have been caught from the ocean and why it is actually affecting the ocean and hurting it. It's a loud plane. This being said, there are a lot of fish that are saltwater fish that are now successfully being captive bred. That is always the way you want to go when you get saltwater fish. The only time I really would be okay with owning wild caught fish is if there is a huge amount of them in the ocean. And even then it's still kind of sad to realize the fish you own now was actually once living happily in a massive ocean and is now living in a box of water. It's kind of sad. For example, I do have a lionfish that was um, caught in the ocean, but lionfish are becoming an invasive species. There are so many of them that I thought that one can be okay, that I'm not hurting the ocean. But still, it's kind of sad, so I still try to give him a you know really big tank. Okay, so if you don't care about the fact that you are going against what that whole movie was about, you know, catching a fish from the ocean, and you still want your dory, reason number two you don't want a blue tang, regardless of reason number one, is that blue tangs get one foot long. So if you imagine a foot swimming around, it's a big fish. It cannot live in a 10 gallon tank. It cannot live in a 20 gallon tank. It cannot live in a 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. It can't live in any of those tanks. Blue tangs in the wild travel hundreds and hundreds of miles every day while they're swimming. They just swim and swim and swim and swim for hundreds of miles every day. A blue tank cannot swim hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles in a tank. It can't because it's gonna hit the wall. So in a tank, a appropriate size for a blue tank, you need to have a 120 gallon tank or bigger. This is a really big tank. And honestly, if you get anything smaller than that, your blue tang will not live its whole life. It won't. It's gonna die young, it's gonna get ill, etc, etc, etc. It's not gonna be happy. And why would you want to own an animal that is unhappy being owned? Just because it looks cool? Because that's a stupid reason. Blue tangs not only are caught from the wild, get over a foot long, need a 120 gallon tank, or preferably at least twice that size, they also live for over 10 years. If you do get an appropriate size tank, if you do get that 120 gallon tank, which is normally about $600, $700, unless you find, you know, like one on sale. If you do get one tank like that, if you do get all the supplies, you're gonna have that fish for 10 years if it does live healthy and successfully and you do do everything right, do do. Do you really want a fish for 10 years just because you like the talking version of it in a movie? Think about it. Let's just go over what I've said so far. Blue tanks, number one, are caught from the ocean goes completely against what all Finding Nemo is about. It's gonna get a foot long. 
It can't live in a small tank. 120 gallons or bigger. One foot long fish. 10 years. It's gonna get huge. Those reasons alone should stop you, but if you're still like, you know what, I can do this. You need to realize how much money this is gonna cost you. And now, let me let me make this clear. If you are, you know, really into owning fish and you've had so much experience before and you wanna get a giant tank, go for it. But you just need to know how much you're about to pay for all this. And if you're still okay with it, yay. Let's say you've owned beta fish or, you know, a big freshwater tank or a small freshwater tank, whatever it is. Let's say you've owned a freshwater tank and now you want a dory, blue tank. I'm gonna call her blue tank from now on because these are not dories, they don't act like dory. They just kind of look like Dory. Going from a freshwater tank to a saltwater tank that large for a blue tang is not going to work for you. It's just not. You'd have to take baby steps and you definitely, 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 definitely cannot go out, buy the tank, put the fish in it the day you bought it and think it's going to be fine. No matter, it doesn't matter if you got a thousand gallon tank, you fill it up with water, you put the fish in there, it's going to die. That's not how it works for saltwater tanks. Do you think the ocean is just tap water with some salt in it? No. It's not. It's a lot more than that. It really helps me when I can visualize things. So think about it this way. Think of a freshwater tank as a chihuahua. You've had your chihuahua for a few months and you've done fine. Or maybe you've had your chihuahua for years and you've done great with it. Remember, chihuahua equals freshwater tank. That's what I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about chihuahuas. You cannot just say, you know what, I've done well with this chihuahua. Now I can own an arctic fox. That doesn't make sense. Think about this as a world where, you know, owning arctic foxes is a thing, um, you would not get an arctic fox just because you successfully took care of a chihuahua. Just, they're not. So arctic fox is a saltwater tank, chihuahua is a freshwater tank, they're different. My first saltwater tank I ever owned was a 75 gallon and I went from never owning saltwater tanks, having this 40 gallon, $300 tank that I thought was expensive, to getting a 75 gallon saltwater tank. I spent about a thousand dollars on everything I needed for that tank. And that's a 75 gallon, so imagine a 120 gallon minimum for a blue tank. Saltwater tanks not only are extremely expensive, but they also require an extreme amount of knowledge to successfully care for them. So to successfully own a blue tang, you will need a tank that's about six to seven feet long, three feet wide. You will need about a thousand dollars worth of supplies. And this really isn't including the $500 tank. You're gonna need a lot of time. I spend every day about 20-30 minutes doing maintenance. Um, you're gonna have to be really patient with saltwater tanks because they need to cycle for at least three months before you add a fish. You have to basically replicate the ocean in a tiny little box. Um, blue tangs on average are about $30 just for the fish and um, you might think, you know, I have $30 in my pocket. I can go get it. If you still think that, rewatch this video because you're obviously missing all of it. Yeah, so hopefully you don't still want a blue tank. If you do, good luck. Um, I have been owning fish for quite some time and I had a blue tank in my 70 gallon tank and I figured, you know, at that size, she'll be fine in that tank. And when she grows, I'll get her a bigger tank. That's also a thing you should not think. Don't think just because the blue tang is small, you can put it in the small tank. It is going to be stressed. It is going to be freaked out. It might not even eat. Let me just say that tangs are literally illness magnets. They get sick so easily. So that's a whole nother topic. You don't want to deal with sick fish. It's not as easy as it sounds. Even at a young age when they are, you know, only a few inches, they still won't do well in small tanks. They will get sick very commonly don't want to risk it and you don't want to make excuses to own the fish because I promise you when it starts to get bigger you're gonna say oh it's been doing fine I don't need to get it a bigger tank no just pick something else pick something else and enjoy Dory in the wild and enjoy Dory enjoy the animated version of Dory in Finding Dory and in Finding Nemo enjoy her as an animated fish with Ellen DeGeneres's voice and you really don't need to spend that much money to most likely be giving a fish an adequate at most life. 
because fish lives matter too. Anyway, on my next video, we'll talk about Nemo and how you can own Nemo in a much smaller tank. Yes, at a high cost, but not as high as Dory and also how they can live healthy, happy lives. I'm going to go enjoy Colorado for the rest of the time I am here. It is very pretty out here. This is the view from my house. I'm also going to upload a video of the scenery here, a tour of my house because it's really nice here. It's beautiful. I never want to leave. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope y'all guys enjoy finding Dory. Um, I know I'm going to. Um, and I'm not getting paid for this. I actually just really care about fish. So, thank you. Thank you.